Welcome back, students. This is Lesson 31, Session 2, on page 677 in your Volume 2 math book. Today we are going to be learning how to use a protractor. So our problem for today is, actually it's more of an explanation. A protractor is a tool used to measure angles. The protractor below shows that the measure of a right angle is 90 degrees. Kara draws the other angle below. What is the measure of Kara's angle, and how can you find out? First, let's talk about what a protractor is. So, in our last session, we learned that a circle has 360 degrees. Well, in this protractor, you know that it's half a circle. If I was to continue, or if I had two of these and put them together, it would make an entire circle. So, um, because an entire circle would be a lot to carry you around or to have in your, um, you know, in your desk, most of the time you only use half a circle to measure, but they put two different ways to measure on it. On the bottom, it measures from zero and 180 is over here because half, if you do 360, divided by two, you would see that it equals 180. So this is 180 degrees on here because a whole circle is 360 degrees. So when you are measuring using this half a circle or half a protractor that's 180 degrees, depending on where the angle is at is gonna determine whether you use the bottom or the top to angle to to measure. So this line, the line that's going to be your straight line, wherever the vertex is at the point, there's a little circle through the middle of your um, protractor. You are going to put that little circle over, like in there, and then the line that's down here at the bottom, you're going to line it up perfectly with um, the ray that's connecting it. So see how it's lined up? When you go over here, there's two options. It's kind of hard to see the top because I just wrote over it, but right here it starts with 10, but over here it starts with 180, 170. When you're measuring, one degree would not, go, you know, you would not go straight from Z, like 180 to 170. That's going backwards. So wherever your arrow is pointing that your line is on is where you should start with the zero. So on this one, the zero is my numbers on the inside. So I'm going to follow my numbers on the inside and see where my protractor takes me. That's not a very straight line. Sometimes if you need to make this line longer, you can also use the side kind of as a ruler. So I'm gonna use it as a ruler here and I'm gonna draw this line longer so that way it's easier to measure. So I'm gonna line my circle back up, line my line up right on top of, there we go, right on top of my ray. This is zero, so I'm gonna go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, and 130 is over here. So that means it's between 120 and 130. And if I look real close, it looks like it's really right at about 125 degrees right here. So halfway between 120 and 130 is 125. So I know this angle is 125 degrees, which is an obtuse angle. And my angle obviously is obtuse. If you know that this is an obtuse angle, so I always tell my students to label the angle first. I know this is obtuse, which means it's gonna be more than 90 degrees. How you will know if you did this wrong is if, if I measured this with the 180 and went backwards, this angle would be 55 degrees. Well. 55 degrees is an acute angle. So I know this 55 could not be correct because I know that this is an obtuse angle, not a right angle. So when I used my protractor, first I lined it up 
and made sure that the line was exactly on this. I extended my line here to make it easier to read. And then on this one, I followed the inside line, the inside numbers to measure this. So now let's go back to our question. It says, what is the measure of Kara's angle and how did you find out? So I found out by that it's 125 degrees, which is an obtuse angle. And I used a protractor. The line fell at 125, 125 degrees or 55 degrees because this is an obtuse angle I knew it could not be fifty five degrees because that is an acute angle. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to page six hundred and seventy eight. All right, on 678, it's giving us the same problem up here. And then down here, it's telling us that we could even use a benchmark to help us. It says you can use benchmarks to estimate the measure. We know that if it's straight up and down, that it's a 90 degree angle. But it's a little bit further than that. It's almost like halfway further than that. So if we added more, or we know that it's more than 90 degrees, but a straight line, if I measure a straight line from here to here, that's 180 degrees because that's half of a circle. So a straight line is 100. So I know that it's less than 180 degrees. So it's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Well, we determined that it was a 125 degree angle. Is 125 between 90 and 180? Yes, it is. So that means my answer is probably correct. Down here it tells um, how to the steps for how to measure using a protractor. First, line up either mark showing zero on the protractor with one of the angles. So I put my vertex in the middle and lined up the line with zero my ray. So then after you have the line and vertex lined up, then you look at the other line to see where it falls on the protractor. On this one, again, it was between 130 and 120, which is 125 because we were going this way, and between, 150, or between 50 and 60 going that way, so that would be 55. All right, on this one, on page 679, we're going to skip that because it's all talking about the things we already talked about. So let's go ahead and move on to page 680. So here on page 680, the first problem that it shows you shows one of these um, protractors that is 360 degrees. So if I start right here and go around, there's 90, 180, 270, and then 360 degrees. So on this one, they're wanting you, see how this red circle goes right here? That means they're wanting you to start at this zero and measure all the way around to this line. I actually don't need to use my protractor on this one because they gave me the protractor right around here. Let me make it quit flashing. There we go. Okay, so. If I look right here and I'm falling this way, it falls between 230 and 240. But I'm going this way, so that means 220, 230, 240. But it's halfway between, so that means my angle is 235 degrees. Number eight. On number eight, I am going to have to use my protractor. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it on my vertex and line up my 
line with the arrow. Now on the last angle we measured, the arrow was going this way. On this one, the arrow is going this way. So I'm going to start on this end to measure because my arrow is pointing to the left. So if I start on this with zero, I would not count zero to 170. I would count zero, 10, and so forth. I also know that this is an acute angle, so my measure should be less than 90 degrees. So when I start here at zero and I start measuring, it's at 30 degrees and it's at 150 degrees. So if I look at 30 and 150, but I know this is an acute angle which is less than 90, that would rule out the 150. So I know that my angle is 30 degrees. Number nine, sometimes angles do not have a straight line right here at the bottom. So you're gonna have to take this and you can either measure it from this side by lining it up and kind of curving your protractor a little, or you can measure it going this way. Either way, you're just gonna line it up on that line in one way or the other. I'm gonna go this way. So I've got my vertex lined up. I got my line right on my arrow. So that means I'm gonna start with zero on this side. So if I go zero to 170, that wouldn't make sense. So I'm not gonna use the inside numbers. I'm gonna use my outside numbers. So when I follow this around, I see that my angle is falling on 30 degrees or 150 degrees, just like my previous one. But this angle is obviously an obtuse angle. And we know the obtuse angles are more than 90 degrees. So if I need an angle that's more than 90 degrees, obviously 30 is not gonna work. So my angle must be 150 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and move on to page 681. It says, read the number of degrees on the protractor to find the measure of the angle. All right, so here's my red line. I'm gonna start with the zero, and the zero is on the inside numbers. So if I follow the inside numbers, I see that it falls between 110 and 120, so that would be 115, and up here it's between 60 and 70, which would be 65. This is obviously an obtuse angle, so if it's an obtuse angle, 65 would not work because that would be a acute angle. So that means my measurement is 115 degrees. Number two. First, I'm gonna look at this angle. Is this acute, right, or obtuse? Well, right would be straight up and down. This is a baby angle, so it's an acute angle, which means I want my measurement to be less than 90 degrees. I'm gonna take my protractor, and the way it is in this book makes this one kind of a hard one, where you learn, line up your vertex, line up your line. Do we start with zero to 10 or zero to 170? Obviously zero to 10, which is the inside numbers. So I followed around and it hits right at 50 and 130. I know that this is an acute angle, so obviously 130 is not gonna work, so my angle degrees must be 50. Let's turn to page 682. Measure the angle at the right. Right, so I'm gonna take my protractor. First of all, let's take a look at this one. This one is definitely not an obtuse angle, but the way that it is, is it's really, I mean, I don't think it's exactly a square, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna check and see if it is, see what type of angle it is. So I'm gonna take an index card that I have here, and it's just a piece of one. I'm gonna line up my index card to my vertex and along that bottom line and see if I can see a line right here. I, even if I drew along this, look, my line is over here, not directly on this. So obviously this is going to be an 
a cute angle, but when I first glanced at it, I really thought it was going to be a right angle. So, I know I'm measuring an acute angle. I'm going to line my vertex up and put the line right on top of it. When I look at this, I know I want to start with 0, not 170, so 0, and if I follow the outside numbers around, it goes to 85, and if I look at this one, if I'm checking myself, it's 105. Well, 105 would be an obtuse angle, so it couldn't be that. That means this must be an 85 degree angle. Oops, sorry, I was kind of cutting off there. Measure one angle of the polygon at the right. Okay, so sometimes you will have shapes where you need to measure an angle and a shape. So again, you just need to turn your protractor to be able to line it up. So I'm going to put my vertex right in the center, and then I'm going to line up my line right exactly on the zero, on the zero line, the little black line down here. And when I go this way, following this arrow, my zero is on the outside. So I'm going to follow it around. And when I follow it around, it looks like it's falling right at 135. Or on the inside, it's falling at 45. Well, obviously, if I look at this angle, it's a pretty big one. So I know it's an obtuse angle. And because it's an obtuse angle, it could not be 45 degrees. It has to be 135 degrees. Triangles can also be used um, to measure angles. You just have to measure each one separately. So first we're going to start with angle A. Again, I'm going to have to turn my protractor kind of a funny way. Line the vertex up. Make sure my line is exactly even with the other line for the zero. And then I'm going to look at this side. And on the inside, whoop, I moved it just a little, so i got to readjust it. Okay, on the inside it's 40. And on the outside it's 140. But if I look at this angle, that's obviously an acute angle. So it wouldn't be 140, it would be 40 degrees. On this one, this one's also an acute angle, and so is this one. That means all of my angles are going to be less than 90 degrees. Next, let's do angle B. So I'm going to line my vertex up and my bottom line with the zero. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to follow my other line up here, and it's at 80 and 100. But I know this is an acute angle, so it has to be less than 90. So that means my angle is 80 degrees. And then on our last angle, C, uh, I'm going to line it up with my vertex and make sure my bottom line is at zero. Down here, the zero is on the outside. So follow it up to here, and it's at 60 or 120. Well, 120 is way bigger than 90, so I know my angle must be 60 degrees. Now, something neat about triangles is you can check your work. So every time you have a triangle, they're going to equal half of a circle. So if I add those three numbers together, 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 8 more is 18. A triangle should always equal 180 degrees, half a circle. Because when you add those up, it will be 180. If it doesn't add up to 180, then you probably measured something wrong if you're measuring a triangle. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you back for session three.